Yeah, you know, I, I like me some Frank Sinatra. And I don't know what you said before we started the show, but you and I had a nice little powwow. And you I reminded so. me of that song. I, I've always called it the rubber tree song, but I think it's Yeah, no, you said that. And I was like, I don't know what that is. And then I was like, oh, that's yeah, the song for High Society with Frank Sinatra and Grace I, Kelly. I call it Crosby. The, there goes the, I think the song is actually called High Hopes. High Hopes is what it's called. Just like the song uh, Baba O'Reilly. It, you know, it has nothing to do with the song. Uh, yeah. Although they do say, hi. Yeah, it's literally in the hi, refrain. Hi, so hi, it, is, hi, it does hi, have something hi. to do with the yeah. song. Yeah, but I, I call it the rubber tree song. Cool. Because they keep going, whoops, there goes another rubber tree. Ba, 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 doo, ba, doo, ba, doo. Um, it's a Cole Porter song, I believe. Is it? Mm -hmm. I know everyone covered it. Yeah. And the reason we started talking about it was I went down the Dom Amici hole with you. Don <laughs> Amici. Does. Yeah. You, you keep saying Dom Amici. It's Don, D O N, Don Amici. Yes, yeah, Don. Dom DeLuise, Don Amici. No, it's Don, D O N, Amici. Yeah, okay. When I say it fast, does it sound like. It was Don from Amici? Kenosha. Yeah. And you know everyone from Kenosha because Kenosha, Kenosha, of dad. Kenosha Wisconsin, because my yeah. dad. My grandparents settled in Kenosha. It has a big Italian American community there. Yeah. And so my dad will tell you every famous Italian who is from Kenosha: Don Amici, Al Molinari, Mark Ruffalo. I'm sure I'm forgetting some people. I thought you meant famous people. You know, you, you know, oh, famous Italians. He doesn't care about other famous people. He, he, here's really a crazy, cares about famous Italians. Here's the crazy thing. My dad. Well, you know, and it, I guess my generation we didn't care as much because. Italian became, you know, ubiquitous at some point. Well, that's yeah. a big word for me. Um, but my dad, like, we would be watching television. And if it was Dean Martin, my dad would go, that's an Italian. That's if right. It was like Sophia Loren, there, there's an Italian mm -hmm. right there. You know, Sophia Loren, you know, uh, uh, you know Frank Sinatra, but that, you know, that's an Italian. And then, uh, you know, when it would be like someone like Tony Bennett, you know, he would always let me know, you know, it was Tony Benedetto, but he shortened it to get in show Jane. business. He's an Italian. And on well, and on. What's and her on. name did that too? Anna Luisa Italiana. Yeah. Uh, and she had five names and she became Anne Bancroft. Mm -hmm. uh, but her last name was actually Italiano, the, the final name. It's too, that's too much, though. That was too much. It was like Anna, back. Rosanna, Dana, blah, 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 <laughs> yeah, blah, exactly. blah, and Frank Italiano. It was literally five names. Anna, you need to look it up. I, I want you to look it up because Anne Bancroft was fine. So I just thought that my family was crazy because whenever an Italian would come on television, they knew it and they would mention it until I became in, uh, friends with uh, Andy Schreiber. And he would tell me every time a Jew would come on television, they were, he's Jewish, he's Jewish, that guy's Jewish, which probably got old because there are a lot more Jewish people in, in <laughs> your business than Italians will ever be. But they I guess every nationality does that, right? Yeah, Anna Maria Luisa Italiano. Okay, you thought I was kidding. Yeah. Anna Maria Teresa Luisa Luisa. Yeah. There's no Teresa in there. Uh, uh, uh. But I will tell you this, every ethnicity does that because there wasn't a lot of representation of other ethnicities other than the pretty, you know, straightforward blonde hair, blue eyed people. But my, my great uncle, uh, Uncle Frank, blue -eyed, but you know what I'm saying? Any, anybody who wasn't. And then, you know, you know, every now and then you would have a blue. We didn't even have dark Europeans, much less black folks or right. Asian folks or up in Kenosha. You know, oh, well, no, in Kenosha was all Italian or Polish. I'm sure my dad would tell us the famous Polish people. Who came you, out of? You know who else is Kenosha. from Kenosha? He's very Kenosha proud. There's a famous comedian from Kenosha. He does the Adam Carolla show, and he's been on this show before. Damachek, right? No, he's Jewish. Oh, I'm gonna let you think about it for a bit, while I tell you about my Co friend Joe Coy. Joe Joe Coy, I think, is Filipino. Well, there's other there are people of other ethnicities than Italian or Polish. <laughs> a famous comedian. Famous comedian. Also from Kenosha. He he does he does a character. He's been on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. That's how far he goes back. Wow. Who is it? He, he does think about it. I want you to think about it. I'm he sure does. my dad would be able to know. I've been to Kenosha twice in my life, so I don't keep up. 
I'll let you think about it. I, I don't know. Before, before the end of the How show. How am I now I'm all of a sudden I'm supposed to be up on the Adam Carolla show comedians who appear? He, he's on all the time. Is his name Vinny Tortorich? No. That's the person who I know who goes on Adam Carolla. Vinny has never been to Kenosha. <laughs> I've been to Wisconsin. Yeah. But I've never been to Kenosha. <laughs> but I've always been to me. Remember that song? You don't know that song, do you? No. Oh, I can't even think of the name of the artist of that song. Anyway, I'll let you think about the famous Italian. He does. He does. He, Orson Welles. He's from Kenosha. That's insane. Yeah. Huh. Huh. All right. Well, we'll we'll let until you figure it out. We, okay. But look, look at some of the most famous Tonight Show comedians. He was uh, he was there back in the Johnny Carson days. He's been on the Friday podcast. Yep. Does Corolla all the time. Does a lot of radio. Not Damachek. Damachek is a Jewish guy. Well, he sounds like he should from, have a Polish he's from, name. He's from PA. You, you should know that. Oh yeah, that's right. He has he has that Pennsylvania accent. It's pretty all right. crazy. I want to talk about a different Don. Don Coddington. Yeah. Oh, the billionaire. Billionaire Don Coddington. When he and I were up at um, Whitney a few weeks ago, and I know I keep bringing this back, but this matters. Don and I talked about, you know, Don has to take vacation time. I guess you could say I was taking vacation time, although my reason for being there was to go to work. You know, I was working out in that desert. I, you know, my company, purevitaminclub.com, Ultra Salt, and also our um, Ultra Fat, we sponsored bad water, the, the toughest 48 hours in sports. Yeah, I had to just tack a day or two onto my trip so that we can go climb Mount Whitney. And, um, you know, we have to do it. We, we didn't really train this time. We should have trained harder. But we didn't. We stayed in zone two and all of the training we did do. Uh, and we went out there and we we knocked it out, even though I got sick on the mountain. We, we were able to summit and get down and, and do the whole thing. We've told the story on a Friday show. Um, and we talked a lot about vacation because he was taking legit vacation time to go do this. And when you start thinking about what people do for vacation, what's the first thing you think of when you think of vacation? Beach. Oh, what other people do? Yeah. What, 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 like if you hear. I don't go hey, on vacation, number one. What, what, Anna, okay, not you. Number two. <laughs> go we on. literally never take. Number two, if, if we ever go anywhere, we have to make sure we have internet because we're working. But yes, people go to resorts or cruises or beaches or places where I guess they can unwind and not have to check work emails. And eat. Okay. What are you doing? Just writing something on that I thought about. Anyway. Am I right? Beaches, all-inclusive resorts, cruises. Yeah. You know, theme parks. I, look, when people, it seems like when they go on vacations around this country, mm -hmm. it's you'll hear Disney World, Disneyland, because they have all-inclusive packages. Right. You'll hear the Carolinas because there's beaches and whatever. And, you know, people go on golf vacations, people that like to golf. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um. And, you know, just on and on and on. Uh, everything seems, you know, when it comes to vacation, it's all around luxury. People go to these spas, like the Golden Doors. Uh, that's that's for people with more money, I guess. They can, they can go there and just have people Hawaii. run out all day. And Hawaii, you know, but again, that, that's a beach oh, vacation. I remember going, I had to go to Sedona to do a thing. And I remember getting off at the Phoenix airport and seeing uh, everybody on the the rental car thing had their golf clubs. It was full of golf clubs. Yeah. So I was like, oh, everybody goes here for golf vacations. Tallulah, Tallulah now travels with their clubs. Yeah. You know, it, it's, um, you know, so it's one of those things. So people are either getting rubbed down at a golden door or they're getting, the, the, you know, if you have a family, it's easy to go to a, you know, a, a Disney World, Disneyland. Right. Theme park type vacation. Disney cruise. Cruises. I was going to say, oh, my my brother. Uh, two, I, I, two of my brothers' vacation. My other brother, Mike. I don't know what they do. I, I never hear about 
Mike being, I think he and his wife will take weekends to Biloxi or to Florida or to something, right? Um, I, I do know he used to go to the Brickyard uh, to watch that race. Uh, he used to go to NASCAR events, this kind of thing. When people want a vacation, it's something to do with a luxury product. Sure. Uh, I know some they people- They want to treat themselves. Yeah, my, my my parents love, my mom loves to play blackjack competitively. Yeah, she's she, she's going to do the tour of casinos. The Jardinas, my mom's family, when they go on vacation, there better be a casino somewhere near. Mm -hmm. Or there's going to be some serious jonesing <laughs> and they will be black. Has she been to Monte now. Carlo? I feel like I want to see your mom in Monte Carlo. No, and let me tell you why. Where's Monte Car Carlo? Uh, outside on the crib, not Caribbean, what's it called? The Cote d'Azur, the, the mm -hmm. Riviera. The Riviera. And where is that located? Europe. Mm -hmm. It's in Europe. I've been yelling at my fa my my family. Do they not go to Europe? No. My, well, you know what's funny? My dad has been to Europe once. He's been back to his dad's hometown once. It's because we dragged him there. He, Anna, I, I'm about to get very, very angry here. Very angry. Wow. And I'm not, this is not. I didn't I'm, mean I'm, to bring it up. Oh, sore spot. My, my dad, his whole life, he could tell you exactly where the Tortoriches came from. They, they were in Bissaquina and they were in Tortorici and they, they were in Perlamo and they came and they got on a boat and they got to Louisiana because they knew they could do some cropping there. And, and we have family there and there's all this stuff. Right. My parents were government workers. They worked as school teachers. Mm -hmm. What you do is you sell your soul to the devil, which means while your kids are growing up, you don't have a fucking extra dime on you. Right. But then you get to retire. If you stay there 35 years and you escape right. every bullet that's flying through a public school, then you get to retire. And when they got to 35 years, there was something called a drop program. And hey, because they were trying to get older teachers to stay because they were the best teachers. For every year they stayed, they gave them X amount of more money, pension, pension, pension. This my dad is all did the same thing in the Alabama system. Yes. So you get it. They, they, oh, so I know they, exactly. This is my dad's path too. They're in their mid to late fifties and they're retired. And now they have a check showing up for doing jack all. Right. It's the deal right. they made with the devil. I'm fine with it. If that's what you want to do. My dad started another business in retirement. He started a tow truck service, which my dad wasn't much of a businessman. He eventually turned it over to my brother, Mike, who turned it into Tottery's Towing, which is kind of a big deal down there now. Right. Um, but my mom and dad are doing okay, just like your dad is doing okay, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're doing okay. And every year it's like, yeah, we want to go to Italy. We want to go to Italy. We want, and now, then you've been, you've been to Europe. You've been, they're not going to go now, I bet. Anna? By the time I was 20, let's see, how old would I have been in 1986? <clears throat> I was 23. 23. But it's, really? Let's see. I was born in 62. I don't know. 22. 82 would have been 20. So let's call it 24 tops. Okay. By the time 86 came around, I had been to Tasmania, Australia, New Zealand, um, I'd been to, you know, places connected to here, Canada, Mexico. I've been to a lot of the, the British Virgin Islands. I've been to, you know, all, just every, you know, uh, you know, places that I can go. Right. I decided I wanted to see the world. Yeah. I would go to Aspen in the summer and train people on the mountains and in winter I go and ski. I taught myself how to ski. I didn't want to just be another Cajun who just, bought a bass boat to match my F-150 and went to the, the river every weekend and got drunk. I wanted to experience life. Right. As soon as I could, I got to Europe, started going to Europe. You know, now, now because I'm with a European woman, we, we haven't been to Europe in two years, which is like a long time. Right. We're going to be there for Christmas because it's our turn to, to, to go there versus Louisiana. But I've been to Europe. So my parents, when I started going to Europe, they were like, so then, you know, you way around Europe. It's like, well, I don't know every street, but I know how to, I know <laughs> how to mean get to streets Europe. of Europe. I know how to get point. there. I know how to, you know, I've been to Zurich. Oh, I've been to Europe. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I can, yeah. And they were like, well, we want to go. We want to go and see where our family's from. Yeah, like, they should go. You're going to have to plan it, Vinny. You're going to have, that's what I had on. to do. This is when they were young. They're too old now, Anna. They're too oh, old. You can do They'll it. Get you, the can plane. Do it. You, just, you have to Anna, be driven around. Anna, they would have, you know, they can't, they got heart problems. My mom's got 20 problems. My dad's got 30 problems. They're too old. Now. It's too, I'm, I'm afraid it's too late. So I would say to them, okay, you want to go to Europe? Yes. Okay. I need you guys to commit. And we're, we're talking, talking 15 years ago, something like that. Right. 17 years ago. I started, you want to go to Europe? Yeah. I need you to commit 10 grand to that. Oh my God. What? 10 grand. What? I went, I said, look, 10 grand. Well, we're taking it when we stand at the, the best of four star hotels. Oh, Mr. Rich guy here. No, dad, 10 grand. That's your ticket. That, that's your plane flight. You know, you, we got to get rooms. I, I'll set up all the rooms along the way. You want all that set up before you get there. These rooms aren't cheap. You, 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 you want to go to a couple of different. I like to drive when I'm in Europe. I don't like taking buses. Right. You know, because that's how you see a different place. No, not just Europe. Wherever right. I've been in the world, I get a car Agreed. because I don't want to be on a bus where they're going to take me. Where to. I want to. I want to. I want to find the best little fish house in the world, or the best whorehouse, or whatever. I want to find the hmm. best. Mm -hmm. Same the whorehouse. You know, yeah. I yeah. want to be driving along and realize that that Pisa is only you know uh, you know. 200 kilometers away, and I could be there in an hour and a half. I want to go. I want to enjoy. I want to stop at a roadside place and get the world's best espresso. Right. Right. That's how you need to see Europe there. 10 grand out of 10 grand. Marie, can we afford that? And I would always say to him, you can't not afford it. This memory is going to be something you will take. And I said, look, when you get there, you're going to spend more money. And look, they're not broke. They, they're not right. rich, but they're not broke. They can, right. they can peel off 10 grand to right. have this memory that they will take to their grave. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. We got to think it this is a big to. expense. But, you know, because you see, with my parents, you can't, you can't do it because they'll start nickel and diming. I said, I need 10 grand. Put it in my account. I will itemize everything. And then when we run through that 10 grand, I'll come to you for another thousand fifty. Maybe I'll cover it myself. And I was like, by the way, you're not covering me. This is you. This right. is covering you. But they wouldn't listen to me. We can't spend that kind. I would love to know what they've spent on fucking casinos over the years. <laughs> A lot. My dad had motorhome after motorhome after motorhome after motorhome. I, and by the way, they sit there. They sit most of the time. Sure. So you take motorhomes are the worst investment. You think a boat is a bad investment? Buy a motorhome. Yeah, motor it's the worst investment on the planet, right? One after another. Dad, why do you need? And I would always say, Dad, look, you get a motorhome. Number one, it, you know, you, you're, you're tooling around. They're dangerous. You got to find. You got to park them. You got to do it. They can flip over. You get in high wind in the desert. And then you, what are you going to, you pay all this money, it, you, you get four or five miles to the gallon in the damn thing. You know what he would say to me? I'm old. I like having my toilet with me. Okay, you win. <laughs> you got a fucking toilet with you. You got a $70,000 toilet. Enjoy. Enjoy. You know, listen, it's about people spend money where they want to spend the money. They'll, they'll, you know how that is folks. If they want, if they wanted to go, they would have gone, but I see, I listen, I, I, we did manage to drag my dad to his father's hometown, which by the way, his father died in 1970, 71, before I was even born, he was born in 1893. So it's quite a big age difference, you know? And so the fact that literally the American Vocinos had not been back to the tiny little hill town on the spur of the boot where my family's from was kind of crazy. Um, but my dad hasn't stopped. See, this is the problem. He's never retired. He retired for six weeks when he was about 70. Yeah. And he complained of back pain that was so debilitating that 
magically went away when he went back to work. So he works right now. So he gets his pension and he works, he's supposed to be working no more than 20 hours a week. He works 60 hour weeks. He makes, I don't know, whatever they're paying him, 25 right. grand a year or something like Oof. just something so to keep him busy. And yeah. what he does is he works through um, a university in Alabama and he set up a foundation. And what he does is he brings business and commerce to Alabama as well as uh, setting, you know, educational stuff. Like he throws these, uh, it thro throws it. He puts on these conferences to educate people, nice. healthcare workers about Alzheimer's and things like that. He, he, for, here's a good example. He, he sees the world in the sense that he about five, six years ago went to Columbia to sell Alabama catfish farmers catfish to the biggest Colombian chain of grocery stores and get them to sign a contract for however many hundreds of thousands of dollars of catfish to order per month to bring commerce and stuff. To, that's what he does. And he makes a pittance doing it. And he just, I just talked to him because Lucy and I are going to get our citizenship through his yeah. mom. And he is not interested because he doesn't no. want to do that. Really? He doesn't, he's, because when he came here, he was told to assimilate and learn English. Right. And, and he was bullied and shit thrown at him on the bus. And you know what I mean? For being Italian. Yeah. Oh, look. And, uh, and beat I, up. You know what I mean? So he's like, yeah. it's not that he's not proud of being, he's very proud of being Italian, but he doesn't need the citizenship. He doesn't need to go back to Italy. He doesn't care. He wants to do what he's doing. And that's what makes him happy. And he doesn't have that trigger. Lucy and I have the desire to connect with the family that's back in Italy. And we, you know what I mean? That's where our triggers are. You know what I mean? That's well, you know, it's funny because, you know, my dad, you know, I would always tell my dad, it's like, look, I, I know you think when you get there, you're going to walk into a village and go, hey, we're relatives. And you're going to have some young kid on a fucking cell phone going, get out of my way, old man, in Italian. You know, it's you're not going to find peasant boys on the street corner with a bacon no, boy cap on going. Oh, you know, what we did find good to see you know, what we did find we drove to Sunny Candro up from Villa Capali, which is where we were saying that's when we met yeah, Paul. Paul, by the way, Paul talking about Cox and stuff in front of my dad was pretty priceless. <laughs> that was worth it alone just to watch my dad be like, oh, he's very buttoned up. My dad, yeah. he's a, you know, PhD college professor, very buttoned up fella. And, um, but we drove up to San Icandro and, you know, in Puglia, how they, they, they shut down the town, every town in Puglia shuts down from noon to about 5 PM for siesta. They do not, you cannot do anything. Nothing happens. That sounds like most of Italy, Anna. <laughs> no, no. Northern Italy, they still, they still engage in commerce in the middle of the day. That, that's People right. They, they laugh the at, they, they want, Italy has been wanting to split it into two countries for they years. Have. Yeah. And, and so they work, but only from 8 a.m. till around right before lunchtime. And then they call it at Puglia, you're a la tabla, meaning you're at the table for hours or you take you have your meal and then you take your siesta, go have sex. And then you come back out, have um, the women go to church and the men have espresso outside the church. And then they have a dinner that lasts late. Right. And yeah. and the kids are always there, like people are always there. It's not like you don't go out to a bar like it's just different. You know, it's very family oriented. I mean, hopefully you're not phone in front of your kids. I don't know what they do over there, but, um, you never know with these Italians. Well, we're but, so we, we go, <laughs> we go to the town and you are, you're buttoned up too, Anna. Come on. I guess I am. I call me old fashioned. <laughs> um, so we go to the town and it's about four 30 ish. Things are starting to open back up. And this giant van drives by covered in campaign posters and literature with you know with the 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 loudspeaker above it you can hear the guy yeah. talking in italian and he's basically saying vote for uh was it luigi vocino it was like it's oh no he was saying i'm luigi vocino vote for nazario vocino is what he said vote for nazario vocino for like constable or syndicate or some weird local office title right. And my dad, I've never seen him show this level of enthusiasm in my entire life. He's the most stoic human you'll ever meet. He goes, I just, that's a van with my father's name on it. Now, my grandfather was Nazario Vocino. Right. But he changed to Nick to Americanize and Vocino, right? Vocino was too ethnic. So Nick Vocino. And Nazario is not a common name 
in Italy, much less in the States. Right. So my dad freaked out. We, we, we basically flagged this van down and said, get out. Cause my dad and his brother and I were there and we were t- talking and we were like, we're the American Vocinos. And we found, cause everybody's name, like if you have Peter and Paul, I mean, the joke in, in, uh, it was a good fellas, Peter and Polly, if you have the same names, cause you named the sons after the grandfather, and then you named the second son after the right. cousin. And so everyone's Luigi and Nazario and Tommaso, which is my dad's name. And so we basically met our cousins literally on the street wow. of this town. So uh, it did happen and it, ma- and it made me go, I'm so glad this happened so that he could see that yeah. there was still some weird connection, yeah. some weird connection, you know, and, and as I was like, oh, Nazario saying hi from the other side. Um, I, I want to, you know, we're going to get back to the Don Fitness. Coddington, which brought this all in, oh, yeah. but. Don? You know, we were talking, you know, you know, just I could go on with this Italian thing forever. They wanted to assimilate so badly that, you know, Papa Tripodi and Mama Virginia, they were they were married. That, that was my great grandparents. And they would not they would speak Italian to themselves, but they would speak. Right. English. They, they did not want their kids. My mom. Same. Who, well, my, my grandmother, my mom, they didn't want them to know one word of Italian. Yep. It's like this is America. You got to be American. As a matter of fact, Mama Virginia, her her name was not Virginia. She changed it to Virginia because one of the thirteen colonies. Her name was Vincenza. Ah, uh, yeah. And nobody would have. Are gotten you that. named after her? Well, my I think my uh, my uncle, my mom's brother, Vincent, was named yeah. after her. But um, I was named after probably. You know, here, here's a true story. The only Marie could do this. I didn't have a name for a couple of days mm-hmm. because uh, my first, my brother's name was Michael after my grandfather. And um, my mom wanted to name the second kid Vincent. And my dad was not for it. He was like, Nope, I don't want any of them named after me. It's, it's not, I, you know, I don't want to do that. It's, you know, it's too, you know, blah, blah, blah. It shows favoritism, whatever my, whatever my dad's crazy thing was. Yeah. So, there was a birth certificate hanging around for a couple of days with no name on it. Yeah. I was the horse with no name. God, yeah. we got to pull that up now. Yeah, you do. Um, Is that Kansas? Yeah. Um, no, that's, uh, it was a Kansas America? or America. One of those two. Um, America. Uh, that was a song by America. Um, so yeah, this horse had no name for a couple of days. And uh, so my dad, you know, my mom was leaving the doctor. There was no hospital. She was leaving the doctor's office. And they said, Marie, we need to get a name here on this document. Uh, you need you need to do something. And my mom <clears throat> said, you know what, I'm not going to name him after Cy, But I will name him after my brother. And that's how I ended up with the name Vincent. Bel Campo, folks. Bel Campo. You want to go to Bel Campo? Uh, Anna, I see, I, I don't see the names. I don't know if there's some kind of rule against that or whatever, but I see the people coming in every day. And it's funny how some people, they, they just take it right over that $100 mark. It'll be 102, 103, 105, 101 points. They'll get it right over $100 at Bel Campo, which means that they got it to like 120. Right. Minus the, their 15 discount. discount. Right. Yeah. What happens when you do that at Bel Campo? Well, if you put in promo code Vinny, V I N N I E, no wimpy Y, V I N N I E, you get 15% off, not the first time, not the first two times, not the first, every time. Every time. Every time. Promo That's code amazing. Vinny, 15% off every single time at belcampo.com. The meat there is superb. That's all I can say. We have a flat iron. I'm getting a flat iron. Oh, Anna, get it. Get everything there. I just did a grass fed and grass finished, certified humane. Yeah. Oh my god, that looks so good. Did I talk about this last week? I just did like a five or six hundred dollar order, and when you take the fifty, because I get to use the Great. discount code too. And yeah. if it's over $100 after the discount, free shipping, which is a big deal when you're ordering meat online. That's where they usually, that's where you usually lose money. So 
folks, go to Belcampo. Some of the have beef carnitas. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I didn't know that. Oh, oh yes, they do. They have it all, Anna. They have the pork carnitas. They got the beef carnitas <gasps> too. Anya mm-hmm. Fernal does not mess around, folks. Go to Belcampo.com and beef check out everything. Beef. When you get to uh when you get to the end right there, put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, <clears throat> you'll get 15% off. And if your order is still over $100 at that point, free shipping. Yes. Belcampo.com. Do they have the meatballs right now, Anna? I'm going to check. Hold on. Give them a little look. I'm, By I'm the way, have you ever figured out the, the comedian's name I was talking about? Cesario. Okay. Why did it take you so long? Because I don't know who that is. How did you figure it out? Because I looked on Wikipedia. <laughs> like comedians that were on that are from the, the Kenosha. Yeah. People, famous people from Kenosha. Every town has their list of famous people. Do you know who Jeff is? You know who Jeff is, right? I don't know him. Meatball really? pack. There is the three pack of meatballs is in stock, $29.97 for the three pack. Gimme it. Let me look up Jeff. I think he's got a new album out right now. Great. Yeah, but he does go back pretty far. And then I looked at his Wikipedia. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, he, he's a buddy. He's like produced him. for Larry Sanders show. Oh, yeah. One of the best shows ever made. He still he still writes and produces all over the place. Great. Um, Good for him. Good he, for you, Jeff Cesario. He's got a new thing out right now. And see, he's got an he put an album out. Um, he put an album out not long ago. He looks like the Italian Adam Sandler. That's a good way to describe him. In this picture, at least. Love that guy. I, I, you know, he, like I said, he was on the show. You could probably, folks. You I'm going to have to watch his stuff. You could go back. If you go back to the old episodes, you could buy the old episodes. You'll hear Jeff Cesario. Uh, he, he does a thing called Play With Pain on, on the Adam Carolla show. And um, I didn't want to give that part away because I thought you would know what it was. I- he, go, go find some of his stuff. The guy is so fast. I will. As a comedian, you will love this guy. Great. Yeah. Um, okay. Why did I bring up vacations? Why did I bring up my past? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because Don and I were talking about while we were hiking that every time we take vacation time, he and I, we're in the mountain together. Right. You know, we were in Italy on a mountain. We were in, in France on a mountain. We... We, we've been to Whitney and, and Mammoth several times. And here we were again, taking time in the middle of the summer, hoping that we wouldn't get tagged without having tags to go up there. And we figured, you know what? If they kick us off the mountain for not having tags, serves us right. We would just hike around the part we can hike around anyway. Right. If there's no one handing out tickets that they were, because we think it's ridiculous because you could go to the next mountain right over from that Mount Williams, Williamson, no tags. Mm. You could touch one mountain from the other. It, it's, it's a scourge what they're doing. You could go to any 14 or in Colorado, or you could go to Jackson hole. You go anywhere, climb all over this country. You go to Europe. They don't even ask if you just go on any mountain, but for right. whatever reason, they, they, this mountain, you need to have a tag to climb okay. up. And we felt since we paid for so many tags and didn't get to go because of being fired out and everything else, they owed us. So we did. It. <laughs> Does that make it right? No, but we did it. But right. Don, Breaking the law. Don did not get enough for that trip. And we we're talking about it's like we were talking about. If you go, you know, like Serena, we 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 bought a thing to Barbados, right? We got tickets and everything. And then COVID hit. We never went to Barbados. I was actually happy. Now, I know Serena, she loves she likes to sit and read a book. You know, this is a woman who does ultras and everything. Her her time, she wants downtime, she wants to be there and read books and sit on the beach and do beach type activities. Mm -hmm. So okay, I can have a good time doing that once in a while. Right. (laughs) But it drives like on day two or day three of those vacations. I don't know what to do with myself. As a matter of fact, I bring jump ropes with like now they have gyms in these places. So there's right. a place for me to go hide. It, no, I used to bring jump ropes and every, all kinds of stuff. So that I can, you know, running shoes, go run around these islands, do whatever. 
Back then, I used to do a lot of scuba diving. I taught myself how to sail Hobie cats when I was young. And I would just go rent a Hobie cat and just go sail because, you know, just sporty type things, right? Right. I don't even like doing the jet skis because, you know, like the, the motorcycles on water because, okay, you do that for 10 minutes. Now, what are you doing? What are you doing? You, you're just on this, this sea do going yeah. in a direction. True. Then you turn around going another direction. At least when you're sailing, you have to sail the boat. Right. When you're scuba diving, you have to pay attention. You're doing a sport. And Don and I were talking about how much that drives us crazy because he just did one of those trips and thoroughly enjoyed it. But he was like, man, on day three, I was glad that we only made it a four day trip because you get to day three. What do you do? What do you do? And we're not right. drinkers. Serena's a teetotaler. I like to have a drink, but what do you do after the one drink? Right. How long can you nurse that drink? Right? <laughs> well, I don't gamble. I, I don't know what to do in these islands. But Don and I talked about how everyone wants to go sit and have a drink with an umbrella. And here we are enjoying the crap out of ourselves in the middle of nowhere. Right. So I'm telling you, folks, do this, do this type of thing. Start thinking of vacations where, you know, it could be a ski vacation. You're out there, you're in the mountains, you're getting fresh air, you're skiing. It might be where you, you go to Alaska and, you, you know, maybe, hell, it could be February. You just want to go spectate the damn Iditarod, you know, and, and experience what it's like to be in 30 below zero weather and being in the middle of a six month nighttime and, and you know just all you know just everything that comes along with traveling and being in a different place i guarantee you going wise the iditarod cannot be more expensive than sitting on a beach with a drink it can't be yeah it's the same thing right e experience different things folks don't think of vacation as you have to go to, you know kick the sandals off in the sand there are other things to do activities. And who knows, you might get interested in an activity, right? Probably not the Iditarod because you need a bunch of dogs, a lot of snow and a sled. I can't imagine you getting into that. But who knows what you might find? Just go do it. You know, or at least figure out how you can go snorkel. Make your move your body. I know everyone's going to laugh at me for doing it. You know, I learned how to conch fish from snork snorkeling. Oh, that's cool. Right. Because if you go down and just pick up conch with scuba gear on, that's no sport. But if, if they're 30, 40 feet below and you're looking at it from and you got to dive down to get them mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. that's more of a sport. Right. You got to get yourself down there and get a conch and get back up, you know. And uh, yeah, I've, I've went conking several times doing that. I love doing it. It's wow. all an activity. Right. Do an activity when you go on these vacations. You know, your vacation simply means to vacate. You're vacating the area you're in. Go somewhere where it might be a little uncomfortable. Go to Kenosha. That can't be comfortable. <laughs> go check it out. I've been. Go do the lovely lighthouse. Where's Kurt Lapeer from in, uh, North or South Dakota? North Dakota. Go there. Yes, I don't know. Go, go check one, that out. It's like you want to talk. Big 30, Dakota. Yeah, it's one of the Dakota. It's like 30 below every day. That's summertime there. Yeah. It's today. Cold. Today, as we're recording this, it's 30 below where Kurt Lapeer lives. Yeah, at least. At least. Go check out that state. Right? Do doesn't North Dakota have uh, Mount Rushmore? They do. Can you climb Mount Rushmore? <laughs> you can walk up the back, I think. I'll you walk can... up the back of Mount Rushmore. I'm afraid to walk up the back of that thing. Yeah, I think that's walkable. I think there's a route where you can walk in and drive up, maybe. I don't I, know this. I'm, I, maybe because I'm a nerd. I enjoy going to new cities and walking all over the city and going to their museums and seeing the things. And I like touring uh, that way. Same. I learned New York that way. Yeah. You just go for a walk. You don't know where you're going. You just keep walking. First time I went to New York, I was uh, 21, maybe. And I was like, you know, you see it in movies my entire childhood. You got to remember, uh -huh. I was somewhat of a babe in the woods. And oh, yeah. I, I was like, I always hear about this New York and everyone talks about this New York. And I was in New Orleans. I was making pretty good money. It was like a, a Tuesday. And I, I said, you know what? I'm going to go to New York this Saturday. 
I just called Delta. That was back when you would just call the airlines. Remember you could go buy your ticket at the counter? Yeah. Uh, we used to call it Fly Fly. Um, we, I, I, I had a friend in New Orleans I used to do this with. Um, we would go to the airport and go, okay, let's go somewhere. Where can we go for under 300 bucks right now? And we would just fly there. No luggage, awesome. no nothing. Just get on the plane, go, get there, find the hotel. We did New York. We did, um, it was always within the country. Um, I think we did California once. We did um, Seattle. We would just do, we, we called it Fly Fly. And we would just go to the airport, buy a ticket and go. Just walk up. That was the early 80s, mid 80s. You could do that. I will say there is an app that I've used in the States. I don't know if they have a European version, but uh, called All Trails. And so yeah. if you, let's say you do find yourself in some random city that you're not that excited by. Let's say you drop into a middle of something where it's, it doesn't have that much stuff going on. You can look at all trails and uh, it'll geolocate hiking trails. And generally most of them have been reviewed by people because it's a pretty popular app. I love using that thing. So like we had to go up to the San Luis Obispo comedy festival. I think this is like two years ago. And so we're up there. San Luis Obispo is a small town. It's a cute town. Yeah. But like you're going to be done with it in an afternoon kind of thing, right. you know, walking around and stuff. And we had shows that night, but so then you can find, you can go to all trails and then decide like, Oh, cool. There's a pretty strenuous hike that we can go do. That's going to take three hours and see some things. And I like that app. And well, we look, that. and then you get tired at the end of the day, as opposed to like, well, you're just sitting in a hotel room, which by the way, I've also done that <laughs> sitting in the hotel room where I'm like, I don't feel like going anywhere. Yeah. But, but you then know, you feel like shit. Cause you didn't go work out or do anything. Exactly. You, you turn into a slug. I, I just pulled up all trails because, you know, the point I wanted to get to was Coddington went back to Whitney this week. Right. He flew, he left New York. He flew back out to LA, rented a car, drove to Whitney and waited until he actually got a pass to go up the mountain. Mm -hmm. And he was able to get a pass because it's at that time of year where every day he was there right when they opened it up, he got a pass. He went up yesterday, knocked another hour off of his time. Damn, Don. He summoned it again. You're badass. You know, and look, you know, he's taking more vacation time, more money, but you know, he's enjoying himself. He just wrote to me because um, we want to start doing the mountaineer route of Whitney. And he just wrote, uh, going to do part of the mountaineering route right now. And he's going to have his tracker on. And uh, he's using all trails to see where it is and how to get there. Ah. He's going to do a piece of it. He's going to do a little recon on it. I know there's some exposure there. Um, exposure meaning you could fall to your death. And, you know, it's oh. kind of um, Please but, be careful. Yeah, but I don't think he's going to go to that area. He won't get that high. Um, but uh, yeah, we, you know, we're going to probably start doing the mountaineering route. That's you cool. Know? So that's so a guy, all trails, you're familiar with it then. Oh, yeah. 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 That, I like that. Don, Don's a guy who he's known me. The way we met was through one of my phone calls. I've probably talked to two, three, 4,000 people on these phone calls. Now mm -hmm. I've made exactly one friend, meaning a guy <laughs> that I, I, we, I literally, we fly and we visit so each if other. You're paying to be Vinny's friend. Odds are. Yeah. I can be bought. Um, <laughs> no, Don and I started a friendship out of a few phone calls. It took him years to get in shape because he was addicted to sugar and grains. Right. And no matter what, and I, it got to a point, like when we were climbing um, uh, Mont Blanc last year, I'm like, dude, you're 60 pounds overweight, and you're as fit as anyone up here, cardiovascularly, why don't you just pull the rest out? And he just pulled it together. The truth is, he met someone, and um, she's into low carb, and I'm not gonna say who it is, because uh, she's somewhat of a figure online. And um, you know, they they kind of worked it out together and he lost. Now I have to know who it is. I'll tell you off the air. Okay. Um, he uh, I can't show you now. I can't put it up. And I know you can't put it. We can't communicate over. Video everyone else to see it. Um, but yeah, he, he got it together. And uh, look at it now, man. He's climbing everything. He's having a great time. 
The guy can't get enough of it. And I'm telling you, folks, don't be like my parents who their entire life said, I'm going to do something. I'm bringing this home now. Anna. you see what I'm doing here? I know you're doing a great job, Villa Capelli. I'll get to it. Uh, you know, you spend the whole life going, I'm going to go to Italy, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And you never do anything. Days turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into years, turn into a lifetime. Mm -hmm. At some point, Don just hunkered down and said, you know what, I'm doing everything else. I'm doing all the work. Why don't I just do this? And that's what he did. And look where he is now, man. He's just, he's tearing it up. The guy's going to be, we're a few days apart in our birthdays. He's going to be 59, three or four days after me. You know, and well, as someone older and wiser, you had a lot to teach him. Yeah, I'm like the big brother, I guess. Talk about Villa Capelli, Anna. We spoke of it earlier. Paul Capelli, God rest his soul. The founder of Villa Capelli is no longer with us, but his husband, Stephen Crutchfield, is and is running this business fabulously in Paul's honor. And what they do, they're in Puglia, the area of Italy I was speaking of earlier where my family's from. And they manufacture the highest quality olive oil, the best tasting olive oil that you will find anywhere on this beautiful planet. And they send it over here and they sell it on a website called villacapelli.com. And this olive oil is so good. I, I use it every day. I sauteed onions in it last night. Um, I drizzled it over the roasted Brussels sprouts that I made last night. I will use it today in something. I have to go to the grocery store. I'll either use it in salad dressings or marinades or cooking my vegetables. It is so good. And the highest quality olive oil, that grocery store olive oil sucks. And by the way, when y'all write me on Twitter and say, I know that Villa Capelli is the best, but money's tight right now. Can I buy X, Y, or Z brand? I don't know what to say to that. You can do whatever you want, but nice olive oil costs a little bit extra, but you should be saving some money by not spending it on all your junky food. Cause now you're doing an SNG. Am I right, Vinny? Exactly. Again, it's about prioritizing the thing. It, the, the thing that you want, you got to make it a priority. Cause I thought the same thing. I'm just going to keep buying my Costco thing. And then when I finally had it, it was so good. It blew my mind. And I was like, you know what? This is worth allocating the funds to. So they've been long-term sponsors of this show, but we've been talking about them long before they ever gave us a dime. If you want to get your hands on some, go to villacapelli.com or you can click through the banner ad that's at vinnytortorich.com. It is not hard to find. We tag them all the time. I cook with them all the time. You can get 10% off your order each and every time if you use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, not with a wimpy Y. And uh, they are now in stock. They have stuff stateside because for several months they were out of stock. So go get it before we sell them out, which should be in a matter of weeks. So Villa Capelli. Discount code Vinny, you know the drill. All right, Anna, for everyone's listening pleasure, uh, Jeff Cesario, since we're doing almost an entire Italian show today, <laughs> uh, he does a character called Chet Waterhouse, where he does fake sports news. And he wow. used to do this character on, um, I want to say K-Rock way back in the day. And um, I used to hear him do it back then. The guy is so fast, so quick. Um, and then he started going on the Adam Carolla show and doing Chet Waterhouse there. And nice. he actually does a podcast where he does Chet Waterhouse as the character the entire time. I've been I've been on that show. Um, I'm going to play a little Chet Waterhouse so that you and our audience can get a little taste. Now, I don't know if this is a good chat or a bad chat or whatever. Some are better than others. I'm just plunking down the top Chet Waterhouse that I see here. You ready? Yeah. I don't know why it's not playing. Oh, wait, let me let me do this. I see what happened here. Hang on, Ann. I'm, I'm producing on a fly. Yeah, I love it. All right, here we go. Chet Waterhouse has said how many facials are too many facials. It's time for the Waterhouse update. Brought to you by Sliver. 
Harper City, the lumber yard that's in a hurry. Euro Cup 2020, that's soccer, Bubba. Italy beats England on penalty kicks. At that point, why don't you just cut cards? A Wembley Stadium crowd hasn't been that embarrassed since Madonna sang without a track at Live Aid. Ouch. Italian goalkeeper Gianluigi Donnarumma blocked one of the penalty kicks by just glaring at it. Italian coach Roberto Mancini used hand gestures that even the mafia said, that's going a little too far, buddy. <laughs> and losing coach Gareth Southgate hustled out of the Westgate for safety. That wrap up sponsored by Trans Am. If you're going trans, at least buy American parts. NBA playoffs, aging Phoenix star Chris Paul. Late for game three, he was filling out a reverse mortgage application. Bucks get back Giannis and Tento Kumpo. So finally, ABC and ESPN can rehook up that lucrative Greek feed. That item sponsored by Jehovah's Witness Protection. Disappear <laughs> Peer into the war. I don't know what happened. Hang on. Oh. Arm grip of the Lord with Jehovah's <laughs> Witness protection. Oh my God. I don't know why it keeps cutting the out. Warm drip of the Lord. <laughs> Olympics. The US team will jet over to Japan in a week, except for Simone Biles, who will vault over. America's pastime. No, not trying to find a way to make hibiscus tea palatable. Baseball. All star break. Home run derby, they were belting them hard. Did someone say belting them hard? Asked Trevor Bauer. And finally, this week in sports history, the date 1979, the place Chicago, Illinois, between games of a doubleheader at Timothy Park. Fans go wild, exploding disco records and creating such a war zone. The White Sox have to forfeit the second game to Detroit, said Tiger skipper Sparky Anderson. We play in Detroit. That's a war zone every night, you pansies. <laughs> this Waterhouse update sponsored by Mount Baldy's. Horse saddles tailored just for bald men. <laughs> it's a bigger niche than you'd think. If you want more of me this weekend, I'll be calling Dana White's new cage match croquet. Brings a whole new meaning to the phrase sending your balls. Sponsored by by U Drive, the app that lets you rent your own car to take you wherever you want to go. This is Chet Waterhouse reminding you to play with pain. Oh my God, that is, he's got a lot of energy. Yeah, he, the guy. Wait, that was all one episode? Yeah, that, that was one. No, oh my that God. Was, that was just three minutes. But when he does his show, Play With Pain, Yeah. Chet Waterhouse show, he yeah. stays in that character the entire time. It's amazing. He's like, he's like the new world Bob Euchre. You know, he's like Bob <laughs> Euchre with more energy. But not well, Bob Euchre from Mr. Belvedere. Bob Euchre when he was an announcer. Yeah, Bob Euchre, folks. Not you sitcom wanna, Bob Euchre. Yeah, Euchre was uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I don't even know about Mr. Belvedere, so I've never seen that. But He was the dad on Mr. Belvedere. Did not know that. Um, Euchre was a guy. That's how I learned about him. Generational he, he gap. He was in baseball <laughs> years ago, and then he got into broadcasting, and he was so good. You know, he would do these same kind of things that Chet Waterhouse does, that Cesario does. Uh, and then they got him for a bunch of commercials, uh, like a beer commercial. And uh, his whole thing was front row, but he would be out in the outfield, over it, on the front row in the outfield. Right. Front row seats, you know. Yeah, you would have to see it. It was just funny. I don't think he's with us anymore. I think no, he no, died. he died. Wow, Euchre was funny. Yeah, um, if you've ever seen the movie with uh, Charlie Sheen uh, called uh, the baseball movie. Oh yeah, what's it called? Not the outfield. It's called. Oh, hold on. Yeah, it's uh, fastball, dirty ball, something ball, um, goofballs. Major League. Major League. His character was called Wild Thing, Charlie Sheen's character. Um, Euchre is in that as the announcer. And yeah. you could tell that they just said, you know what, Bob? Just just do Bob. Just go go be Bob and yeah. we'll just work around it. He was excellent in that movie. So you might want to go check that out. You also want to check out Anna Vocino, anavocino.com. 
That's where you'll find free recipes. Sometimes she's got funny stuff there. You never know what you're going to find. You don't know. know. But well, you know, it's going to be recipes. You know, you're going to get free stuff. Just go to AnnaVacino.com for your free stuff. Also, she has Eat Happy Cookbooks, Eat Happy Book One, Cookbook, and Two. And two is spelled T-O-O. Go check those out. But wait, there's more. Eat Happy Kitchen. Eat Happy Kitchen, folks. You want to go check out that. Yeah, because she's got the marinara, she's got the Punta Nasca, and she's got the uh, the, the cream sauce. Mm -hmm. What's it called? The, the, the crema. crema. The crema. Mm -hmm. That's Italian for cream sauce. So go check that out. Uh, Anna, anything else you got going on? Uh, where are you going to be? You got to be places, right? You and uh, Andy are going to be somewhere. Yeah, Andy are and I are going to be in Las Vegas, uh, October fifteenth and sixteenth. Yeah. Keto or what is it called? Las LV Keto expo.com it's on my site i don't know but yeah i'll be there that'll be fun we'll miss having you there yeah uh, i can't i can't the grocery it. stores coming up because we're about to get into lassen so I'll, I'll i'll know more about that and uh some other grocery stores cool yeah so go check out everything anna's up to uh also hang around because we're going to play a little music at the end of this because i'm not done with this podcast but in order to do that, I've already put two songs. Oh, well, I think there's one song. The piece of the America song is in there. Bill's going to have to cut that out. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to jump off because I've got to do a pickup for NBC. OK, um, folks, uh, you know what to do. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, please go to VinnyTotters.com and click through the banner. Turns out Amazon sent me a note saying, hey, your people do so well that they're going to up my commission. Now that's yet to be seen. That's a miracle though. I'm like, wait, you, first of all, you cut our commissions, our people keep using it. So now you go, okay, we'll give you commissions back. <laughs> Still, I don't know what that means. That's, I haven't that's seen an increase. The best news I've heard out of Amazon in literally years. Anna, I have not seen the increase. It could be a, a okay. you know, 2%. Just 1%. keep doing it, folks. Keep doing yeah. it. So thank you guys for still doing that. But I yeah. do appreciate the uh, super fan contributions because Literally, that's how I'm keeping the show running. So thank you guys for that. Uh, I will cut this off.